On a moonless night, far from the noise of cities, if you raise your eyes to the sky, you'll see a canopy of stars, scattered like diamonds on black velvet. But what you're seeing is only the beginning, that quiet shimmer. It hides a storm, because when we peer deeper, using our most powerful telescopes, the darkness erupts with light, billions of stars swirling in great spirals, dancing to the rhythm of gravity and time. The Milky Way alone may hold up to 400 billion stars, and beyond it, other galaxies, countless more, fading into the fabric of space. We are surrounded by suns, yet among these celestial fires, some shine with an intensity and a scale that defy imagination, which raises a question so simple and yet so profound. What is the largest star in the universe? We often look to our own sun as a standard. It dominates everything in our solar system. Its light gives us life. Its gravity binds us. It is, by our everyday experience, enormous. But in truth, our sun is utterly ordinary, a G-type main sequence star sitting comfortably in the middle of the cosmic scale. There are stars so immense that, compared to them, our sun would vanish like a grain of sand in a desert. But what does it mean for a star to be large? In astronomy, scale isn't just one thing. We can measure mass, the amount of matter a star contains, or volume, how much space it occupies. And here's the twist. The most massive stars are often not the largest in physical size. And the most voluminous stars, those with atmospheres that swell and billow out into space, can be relatively light. The lives of stars are defined by this dance between mass and expansion, gravity and pressure, heat and loss. Let me tell you about one of the most massive stars we've ever observed, Bat 9998. It lies in the Large Magellanic Cloud, a small satellite galaxy of our own. Bat 9998 is a true monster, estimated to be 226 times the mass of the Sun. That's 226 suns compressed into one. And yet, its size is only about 37.5 times the Sun's radius. Dense, compact, blazing with intensity. It's young, just 7.5 million years old, but already shedding mass at an incredible rate. Scientists believe it has lost the equivalent of 20 suns since it formed. And when it dies, as all stars must, it may end in a catastrophic supernova or collapse into a black hole. But this story isn't about mass. It's about size, physical enormity, the kind that stretches our sense of what's possible. For a long time, the champion of size was thought to be a red supergiant named U.Y. Scuti. It was estimated to be 1,700 times the radius of the sun, a figure so staggering that if it replaced the sun, it would engulf the orbits of Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and possibly even Jupiter. But science is always evolving. New measurements revealed that we had misjudged its distance. When corrected, the star shrank. Its real radius? Closer to 775 times the sun's size. Still vast, but not the largest. Not even close. In fact, UI Scuti now doesn't even appear in the top 80. The same story applies to another candidate. Stevenson 2, 18. It was once believed to be even bigger. So big that if you could circle its surface at the speed of light, it would take nearly nine hours to complete a single loop, compared to just 14.5 seconds around the sun. But again, the uncertainty in distance throws everything into question. Some estimates place Stevenson 2, 18 at 2,150 solar radii, but those figures may be wrong. And there's something else. Theory suggests that stars may not be able to grow that large in the first place. Astrophysical models propose a limit to a star's physical size, around 1,500 times the sun's radius. Beyond that, the outer layers become so diffuse 
so tenuous that they begin to blend with the interstellar medium. It's no longer clear where the star ends and space begins. In such cases, defining a surface becomes more philosophy than physics. And that's the challenge. Measuring stars at this scale is extraordinarily difficult. These aren't just far away. They're enveloped in ever-changing shells of gas and dust. Their brightness varies. Their atmospheres boil and churn. And many are so obscured by cosmic debris that even our finest instruments struggle to get a clear reading. Astronomers rely on indirect measurements, luminosity, spectral analysis, distance. Every calculation carries uncertainty. And yet, there is one star that, based on everything we know so far, may sit atop the cosmic throne. Its name is WOH G64. It lies in the Large Magellanic Cloud, roughly 160,000 light years from Earth, and it is a red supergiant of astonishing proportions. Its estimated radius, 1,540 times that of the Sun. If WOH G64 replaced our Sun, it would extend past Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and even Jupiter. It is not just large, it is unthinkably large, a stellar leviathan. But WOH G64 is not just big, it is dying. It has entered the final stages of its life. Having burned through its nuclear fuel, its core is collapsing. The outer layers, no longer held tightly by gravity, have expanded outward in a vast, bloated sphere. Around the star, we find something else a torus-shaped cloud of material that has already shed. One light year in diameter, a ghostly ring of gas and dust drifting in space. If all that material were collected, it could form a solar system like ours nine times over. Think about that for a moment. Nine solar systems carved from the remnants of a single dying star. This is stellar death on a grand scale. And yet, even now, some observations suggest WOH G64 may be even larger than we thought. One study puts it at 2,575 solar radii, nearly a full thousand more than our best estimate. If that's true, WOH G64 isn't just the largest star we've ever seen. It may be the largest possible. A light speed orbit around its circumference would take over 10 and a half hours. For comparison, light travels from the Sun to Pluto in just four. And still, even with this awe-inspiring scale, we must be cautious. Another study might come along tomorrow revealing a new error, a new model, a better distance. That's the nature of science. There is no final answer, just a better question. So for now, WOH G64 wears the crown. It is our best candidate for the largest known star in the universe, but it may not hold that title for long. Somewhere out there, hidden in the veils of dust and gravity, another star, larger still, may already be waiting. Red supergiants like WOH G64 are unstable, ephemeral, and rare. They live fast, die bright, and scatter the building blocks of life across galaxies. Their surfaces heave and pulsate. Their atmospheres boil with convection. And eventually, they collapse into silence. A supernova, a neutron star, a black hole, a final act written in light. But we must not think of them only as numbers. These are not statistics in a catalog. They are places. They are legends. They are reminders of what the universe can do when it is left to run wild. WOH G64 is not just large. It is a monument to cosmic time, a cathedral of hydrogen and helium, echoing with the roars of fusion and gravity, perched at the edge of existence. As our instruments improve, we'll discover more. We'll look deeper into the darkness. We'll pierce the dust. We'll find stars even stranger, even larger than we thought possible. But even then, the lesson remains. In the universe, nothing is permanent, not even the throne of the largest star. 
and so we look up into the night, knowing that the story isn't over. It has only just begun.